Have you ever wondered what is the real meaning behind this image? I mean, this image. It may look like one of the Piet Mondrian's paintings, but it's actually not. But it's heavily inspired by it. This is actually a source code, if you may believe it, to a programming language, esoteric programming language, called Piet, right after this painter. So, in a nutshell, an esoteric programming language is a language that is created rather as an experiment or a proof of concept or even as a joke. But it discovers some new aspects of programming, like, for instance, using an image as a source code. As programming languages tend to have a more textual nature, seeing such a new example of creativity, of exploring new ideas, is extremely refreshing. Even in everyday work, we may find occurrences of such creativity, but we often seem to forget about it. Tonight, on this show, we'll try and fit the word artist and the word programmer together and explore the ways that those two intertwine. Even though those two words do not seem to fit each other very well, apples, pineapples and pens did not seem to fit very well either. What? 2016? How do you do, fellow kids? Anywho, let's get right to it. Our programming adventures start quite differently. For instance, mine started with PHP. Even though that was the PHP language that I started with, it seemed quite enticing, even then. Even then I thought that there was something more to it than recreating just mere concepts behind programming at all. As programmers, we have tasks that may seem tiresome and repeatable, but still we can find some occurrences of the artistry along our ways. Some of the tasks can be automated, of course, like creating some configuration files, etc, etc. But still, there are some things that need to be coded. Automate Coco Jumbo Automate. Even though some of those tasks have to be done. A sudden relief came to my mind after a little bit of thought. What if we look at our coding from slightly different perspective just to see if there is indeed any speck of creativity in here? What if we were artisans? Imagine this. What if instead of writing our code we forged it on an anvil? Huh. It might be a good esoteric programming language now, is, couldn't it? Another idea could be looking at a website project, for instance, or just any project created for a client. We seem to create tailored solutions, tailored to our client's needs. Tailored, forged, those two words and the craft itself in that matter is deeply connected with our jobs, our programmer's jobs. Masterfully created pieces of code belong in the museum. And not just because they sometimes are ancient. So masterfully created pieces of code belong in the museum, okay? But we can see with that that code mastery seems to be created somewhat with creativity. Just because with mastery we are a step away from craftsmanship and the art itself. Let's follow that thought. So I present to you the elegance and or, or slash complexity curve. So, we start our programming journeys with little to no knowledge. After we've went through some tutorials or through some courses, we get to know the fundamentals first. And that's where the fun begins. <laughs> the code we write right then seems to be simple and clean, and we get to know the programming fundamentals right then. Little do we know that with this simplicity also comes beauty. The more code we create, the more complex it becomes, and the more patterns and ways to program we know, we get to know. Somewhere along the way, however, we may start to see that our code becomes too complex, harder to read, even for us. And do not even mention your team members in here, because if they see your code in such a state, they may just go out of their minds. The code starts to lose its charm, and with more complexity comes just every bad practice and every bad pattern we can think of. But worry not, there is hope. From here, the only way to go is to go up, or 
down with the complexity. So if we see ourselves in such situations, we just have to split our code somewhere, make our functions shorter, etc., etc. We have to apply some new patterns to our code and make our code locally less complex, but globally more complex. And where's that elegance you've mentioned in the beginning? Okay, calm down, calm down. We just have to flip our charts upside down. And then we can see that in the beginning, our code is not so complex, but it is pretty. It's clean and simple and so easy to read. Somewhere in the middle of our road, our code starts to become more complex and thus less elegant. And then we go back to our humble beginnings with the local scope of our code. But we can create so bigger solutions with those smaller pieces of code. And those small pieces of code belong in the museum as well. Okay, all right. Let's get back to the ground and try and fit the word artisan programmer slightly more literally. Like, like, music. Okay, here's another image to wave about. This is a logo of Sonic Pi, a totally code-based solution to create pieces of music. Many provided functions and samples can be used to create great pieces of music and also give live performances. I'll leave you a link in the description below to a performance by Jilda and Sam Aaron, the creator of the Sonic Pi itself. Hopefully I, I pronounced it right. Please, <laughs> I hope so. Go and check it out, definitely. What a great time to be a programmer, you may think. And you will be absolutely right. With pieces of code, you can also create music and become a full-time member of a band, of a music band. Now, isn't that cool, huh? Okay, okay, all right. If that was not inspiring enough yet for you, here I'll present you something that I think is a creme de la creme of the artist programmer connection. And our key words here will be game development. In our programming journeys, logical thinking is always a must. But right here, the skill is pushed to its limits. Just because we have to create some unique solutions to unique challenges that are along our ways. Here are a few examples of such unique challenges. How should the player character move? How should the camera follow the player character? And how should the enemies behave? While you may think those challenges are quite simple, they're actually not, just because we can approach them at any angle. Some challenges, however, are not connected with the game mechanics itself, but rather with creating the game itself. For instance, you may want to create a whole game by yourself with sounds, with graphics, etc. Of course, if you feel adventurous enough. There's even a Wikipedia article on the programmer's art, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. The so-called programmer art is used rather as a placeholder art, but you may indeed find a new artist in you. Not just a code artist, but for instance, music artist, etc, etc, etc. Also, the challenges differ from the game to game and from genre to genre. Whether your character has to jump around and rewind time, or flips the gravity now and then and tries not to take a closer look at the spikes, the uniqueness stays the same. Which sounds weird when spoken out loud. Even if you grab some already made assets and just put them together with hot glue, there will be challenges unique to your game and to your game genre, for instance. Okay then, now let's take a quick gander into the past, into the world of 80s and 90s development, the game development, of course. There were no big engines right then, and the games kept on coming, loads of awesome games. Creating games right then was not only a show of working around the hardware and software limitations, but also a great demonstration of how those limited resources may impact the game's designs. Of course, you may want to get back to that just to see how those resources were limited and how you can solve those issues with that. But having such hardware or software development kits 
could cost an arm and a leg, so watch out for that. Fortunately, we can emulate such things today without losing any of your limbs with use of fantasy consoles. And what are fantasy consoles, you may ask? Well, there are pieces of software which introduce the hardware limitations artificially. But also, there are full software suites in which not only you create code, but also create all the other assets like music, sound and graphics, of course. One example of such console may be Pico 8, a fantasy console with display with resolution of 128 by 128 pixels, 16 color palette and only 32 kilobytes to fit a whole game inside of it. While you may think that it is virtually impossible to fit a whole game, a whole working game inside of it, take a look at the game of Celeste, which was created during a four-day game jam, at least the first version of it was created in it. What a great time to be a programmer, with big engines or small things like fantasy consoles, or even with pure code, you can create so good interactive experiences for any person to enjoy. Now, isn't that cool? So, to sum up, day-to-day -day programming may be a tedious task and sometimes even overwhelming. And we often forget the niceties of it and the pleasures of it. Creative and or artistic approach to what you're coding may be a good boost to your productivity and a good boost to your sense of fulfillment. First-hand experience here. So, I have a quest for you. After you've written a piece of code, try and look at it as if it was a painting or a sculpture. Try and look at its subtleties, used patterns and maybe just its simplicity. Well, maybe you could even put it somewhere in your room, like over your bed or something like that and wake up every morning with the sight of that beautiful piece of code you've created. However, if you're not a programmer and you've somehow ended up here, I have a quest for you as well. Try and find creativity and artist respects in your day-to-day -day job and make sure to share your experiences in the comment section below. And remember, life without art would be like living without underwear. It would be barely recognizable. <laughs> Take care and see you in the next... Extremely nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Did not feel... <laughs> of the come on oh. is <laughs> a little bit of water in my mouth stop hammer time so attended that can slightly faster come on focus they will know ah they will know <laughs> You will know. Siemanko, witam w mojej kuchni. Right? Right. Right. Right? You will be true. You will be right, not right. Absolutely. Right? Rather than a... Right? Water. Mmm, water. Come. Working around, working, coming around. Right. Right. The Kames kept on. Kames? Kames? That's not right. Kames kept on coming. Kames kept on coming. Right. Domo arigato, Mr. Robato. Right? No, it's us. That's it.